All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal TV. Today, we're going over all of the current events, including the 7.4 earthquake that just struck Taiwan. Uh, there is breaking, breaking, breaking news, and it may uh, not, it, we, we could not verify it, of uh, Chinese vessels and warplanes around Taiwan. We will show you what that is. That is from Times Now, which is an Indian publication. Uh, we have not been able to verify the several uh, reports that they say they have found, uh, at least not yet. So hopefully that was something that was pre-planned. It's nothing unusual on a normal day to see 30 warplanes of China uh, go over and nine uh, vessels. Just the other day, they actually had, I believe it was eight warplanes and five uh, Navy vessels surrounding Taiwan. It would be really crappy timing if they ended up choosing now to invade. But who knows? If you were the one deciding, would you? Uh, that's one thing to think about is if, if they were in a disaster, would they be on top of everything else as far as defense goes? Uh, hypothetically, even if it, if it wasn't real, uh, I wonder if they're thinking about that right now. And then North Korea launches a ballistic missile off its east coast. Uh, this is... I, obviously, we've been following everything, especially the stuff that was happening off of Yongping. We actually just covered uh, recently in that video comparing the 1984 and the 2012 version of Red Dawn, uh, those intro scenes in Red Dawn, the, the newest one, to what's happening right now. And it was eerily predictive of a lot of stuff that's going on here in 2024, 12 years later. Um, and then, of course, what what that was said in the 84 version is even more eerie because that was like 40 years ago and eerily connecting to what's happening right now here in the U.S. Uh, but now you have North Korea launching ICBMs off of its east coast. Uh, the missile was launched from the country's east coast towards the Sea of Japan. Japan's Coast Guard reported that the projectile fell into the sea. South Korea, along with the United States and Japan, are strengthening their relationship in the midst of concerns about North Korea and Vlad's country working together and threatening the region. President JB is planning to meet with the Japanese and South Korean officials during a NATO summit in Washington, D.C., according to the Japanese media. Now, of course, Japan isn't part of NATO, but they're trying to create their own, and they're even calling it an Asian NATO, uh, or I believe it's a, it's uh, going to have its own name, South Korea, Japan, the U.S., uh, and uh, they have talked with other countries as well as possibly even joining that. So this is quite alarming for Japan, and it's nothing that is new, uh, but as far as the kind of things that they are launching is getting more alarming by the day. The missile launch comes days after Vlad vetoed a United Nations resolution that monitors enforcement of nuclear sanctions against North Korean government. Of course, he directly went in and said, nope, you're not going to do that. Uh, so they can veto it. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un recently encouraged his military to prepare for a potential war. At the end of March, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishido offered to meet with Kim as soon as possible to address tensions. And of course, uh, Kim Jo Young, uh, his sister, replied by saying that there would be no breakthrough improvement in North Korean-Japan relations, and they said no to the meeting. They basically said, yeah, we're good, click, and hung up. <laughs> so they are not on speaking terms. North Korea has also torn down all of its reunification statues and huge, huge, one of the huge archways when you go into North Korea that signifies South and North Korea someday reunifying. Uh, they tore that sucker down. So it doesn't sound like uh, they are going in a positive direction. On top of that, if you look at every freaking prophecy out there, uh, they have talked about almost exactly this happening. Not to mention the predictive pr programming in almost every movie talks about this. So it, it's definitely in the back of people's minds that this might go south. As far as actual uh, information that we have uh, gotten in the last six months, the U.S. and South Korea are drilling for a possible surprise event from North Korea. Think of uh, what happened to Israel only to South Korea and think about that kind of event happening out of nowhere. That's what they were actually prepping for on top of their cut the head off a snake normal drills that they were already doing. 
in their hypothetical scenario, they showed uh, they had the 500 plus crazy 500 miles long of artillery uh, launching into South Korea without notice. And the U.S. drilled, hypothetically taking it out, uh, taking out all of their artillery uh, weapons on the other side of the border. Of course, it was a drill. So, yeah, very alarming stuff. We're going to talk about this and much more on tonight's show. So stick around. It's going to get crazy. And this one might not be for the faint of heart. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? It's Adam, A.K. Marf, and let's get right into it. On top of North Korea, we have Haiti protesters raise Russian flag and beg Putin's military to save them from the gangs. Uh, let's bring in my co slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on? How are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine, just trying to weather the storm at the moment. So just to let you guys know, Dex might actually cut out. His, uh, you are under a uh, full-on tornado warning. Is that correct? Until A tornado watch and uh, some pretty severe stuff. I had about 1,500 lightning strikes just south of me right now. Before the show, uh, Dex and I were talking, and all like mid sentence, it was like it was a huge, huge thunderous uh, boom. So if you hear that, you know exactly why. Um, now, lots of craziness going on in the world. Uh, we actually have high winds here in Washington as well. It's it's getting crazy outside here. So I I was surprised to hear that you were on tornado watch. So if you if you do pray or you want to send positive vibes, but if you pray, just pray that everything is okay for uh, Dex. Uh, but Dex, do you want to go over the Haiti protesters? Uh, and this is this is very odd. This was this was the extreme scenario. We said like we said, look, somebody needs to come in and save uh, save the problem or solve the problem in Haiti and save the population there. An outside force would have to do this, and everybody's just sort of hemming and hawing over who's going to do it, and nobody's really doing it. And I even said, and we've even said, well, you know, China or Russia, but neither one of them are really close by, nor would it, you know, it strategically it might be fantastic for them to have a foothold in one of these, lo you know, southern Caribbean locations. Uh, but we didn't really think that was the most logical thing given everything that's going on. Well, apparently the people there that are protesting, they like that idea so much, they're raising the flag uh, of Russia and they're asking and begging. I shouldn't even say asking. They're begging for Putin's military to come in and save them from the gangs. So that's how extreme it is getting in, in Haiti. So, um, you know, this is I, I I never thought we'd see it this way, but uh, that's what they're they literally are asking for that. Um, they they're even parading around with a with a in one of the pictures you'll see a, like a picture of Putin on a flag. So um, kind of a crazy position to be in. Obviously, there's been a tremendous loss of life there with the um, pretty much state of anarchy, if you want to call it that, where the gangs are running everything. Um, and the civilians or citizens that are trying to just live their lives are most of them are just getting the heck out of Dodge, so to speak, out of Port-au-Prince and heading into the outer areas. But still, 
everywhere they go, they're running into issues because there's no control in the country right now. My question is if this is some sort of op, like did somebody pay him to do this? Is there a three-letter agency that's doing this for some reason that we yet not know? Uh, Like, you know, they got all these Russian flags and even ones with Putin printed on it and stuff. In all of the chaos, somebody is at a print shop printing out uh, iron-ons for flags, and they're they're going out and begging Russia publicly. And then who are the journalists that are covering it? Journalists have not had the best of times in uh, Port-au-Prince and in these areas. Uh, I understand that there are some pretty savage, uh, very, very uh, brave journalists there now, but there's also some three-letter agency uh, folks there as well, I'm sure, from every agency uh, in the world. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Oh, remember the YouTuber we covered who got uh, yep. kidnapped going there to meet with barbecue. He apparently has been released, so that's the update on him. He's on his way back. Yeah, that we covered that the other night. A, a YouTuber by a, my fellow Arab, but I think his channel is just Arab. Uh, he went there to supposedly interview barbecue and then got kidnapped and was being held for six hundred thousand dollars. So. That there's your update on that, and then Niagara Falls also declares a state of emergency uh, for this total solar eclipse. Now, most people understand that this. I, the comments I've seen on not only my own videos but others about some of the disasters and things that are going on over the uh, eclipse. So there is a hype about this and the National Guard being deployed. A lot of the people commenting says, yeah, right. They don't, you know, the the National Guard being deployed. Why is everybody getting so excited? It's only going to be a few minutes. Yes, it's only going to be a few minutes. But the day of is going to be insanity for all the towns involved because you have now millions of people traveling to an area, even if it was, I don't know, some sort of huge event where a flower was going to open over 30 seconds and hundreds of thousands traveled the world to to go watch this thing. When you have huge groups of people in one area, that's when you get trouble. And we're not even talking about tea attacks or anything else. You get people drunk and fighting and and uh, people getting pissed off at each other, having di- you know differences, whatever else. That's normal. But now there is all of this declared threat to the U.S. You have multiple conflicts, which the U.S. is involved in, either indirectly or directly. And you have, of course, the chatter from all of our three-letter agencies, which could be made up or secretly paid or part of a bigger operation, a big agenda. Who knows? Uh, But we do know that millions of people are gathering for this in several areas. And now Niagara Falls is actually declaring a state of emergency. When some people hear that, they go, what the heck, what state of emergency? But state of emergencies can be declared for many things. Uh, they can be declared for, basically it's a, it's a bureaucratic way for them to access money and funds and sorts of other things, and then also move around uh, enforce, law enforcement and things like that. Uh, but some are looking at this and saying, hey, this is really, really weird. They're getting prepped like something is going to go down. Of course, uh, I'll, I'll go over to you, Dex, but we also covered how many events are going down that day. You have the, the Devil Comet may be visible. You have the solar eclipse. NASA is launching three rockets that's named after APEP, which is literally uh, on Wikipedia. It says APEP slash Apophis, <laughs> which is the god of chaos, and APEP is the uh, the absence of light and the serpent of deity or whatever. Um, And you have CERN starting up on April 8th, and you have National Guard being deployed. You have all sorts of things going on. It it's sounding kind of nuts, Uh, and they're telling people to stay home. Dex, go ahead. Yeah, I think CERN's already started up. They're actually doing their collision, where they you know the the major uh, collision that they do, which is what causes the the event that goes off there. That's happening on April 8th. So yeah, they're they're, they've got things up and running, and they're running running their protons around or whatever they do in that giant hadron collider. But um, here's the other reason why everybody's trying to get here and see it. There's not another one for another 20 years. The next one will be in August 23rd, 2044, and it only hits like three states in America, which is like North Dakota, South Dakota, and Montana. So it's not uh, not much of a path 
Um, and that's why this one seems to be getting all the attention because there's a long gap before the citizens of America will have the chance to just drive over and see an eclipse. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I saw the one in 2017. It was a spectacle. It was something that was quite a, uh, I mean, it was it was pretty amazing. It, it can't be described if you haven't seen it before. I mean, it is what it is. You are in daylight. The day I saw it was a, a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. When it covered the sky, you could see stars. It was absolutely nuts. We're watching and it doesn't get dark, dark until the very last second. And then almost immediately it starts getting light again. But for a brief second, you're seeing the, uh, it, it, the sun get covered. And then all of a sudden, it's like you're looking up at a night sky. It was nuts. It was really, truly something I, I, you, you really, you can describe it, but you can't describe the feeling it gives you being in sunlight and then two seconds later being at nighttime. I mean, it was a, it was a little bit longer than that. And then the glow of before and after this weird kind of orange glow when it was just a sliver. It's just, it's an odd event. And if you haven't seen it, I don't blame you for driving across the country to go see it. If you're under the path of it, you got, kind of got uh, lucky. Uh, but as far as the, the craziness that could go down, we're not going to sit here and hype it up. But we will say over and over again, you should at, you should already be a prepper if you're watching this show. You should have stuff uh, lined up just in case. April into May is when all of the chatter lines up. Not to mention, in this entire year, people should be getting prepped up. We're going to be doing a show with a couple of creators, uh, preppers, and we're going to go over some specific questions as far as, so if if you are like many of us, we assume that the first thing to happen in a conflict is our power is going to go out, we're going to lose communications, we're going to lose all of this. What do you do, A, if you're prepared, and B, if you're not prepared? Because there's many of us that do not believe you might have, you might not have uh, a year or two years or three years to prep. You might not have months. If if something does uh, go down in, in a big way, then it, you know what do you do then? What if you didn't get a chance to do all of these things? Uh, so we'll be going over that in the next couple of days. People think you're crazy if you think a disaster is uh, is coming. But at the same time, if you follow this stuff, it's pretty hard to deny that something is uh, very, very big is on the horizon. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, let's see here. All right. And then let's uh, we're going to go over to the chat here in a second. Before we do, I want to remind you guys, you can not protect yourself. That's why we have recommended for the last four or five years. Go over and check out EMP Shield. If you want your car to run through not only an EMP, but a solar event, then go over and get an EMP Shield on it. Uh, it's a small investment for what it does. It will allow your several thousand dollar to forty thousand to sixty thousand dollar car, whatever kind of car you drive to have it work after an EMP or a solar event, then that's pretty much a, a crazy thing for a couple hundred bucks you can get protected. Uh, again, go over and check out EMP Shield at marfuglenews.com slash EMP. It will ground the signal in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your device. That way you can continue to roll and get home to bug in or to get out to bug out. If you have a family and you work far from home, then it's probably a smart idea. Uh, a lot of the uh, cars affected, usually yeah, actually the newer ones, the older vehicles before certain years do not need them. Uh, so if you have a very, very old classic vehicle, you might not need it. Uh, but for most people with highly computerized cars, then it's probably something you need to look into. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Make sure to use the code MARF because you'll get $50 off per device and you'll help our independent channel. More help than anything else, though. Get yourself prepped first before you do anything and uh, share our stuff out. Share our channel out with whoever you can. If you know somebody who you think would find value in our show, share our stuff out because obviously you can tell with this many people that tune in every night, with pe the amount of people that watch every day, you would think that something would be, you know, the ball would get rolling, but it doesn't. It makes you wonder, right? So make sure to share us out. That would be the most helpful 
out of anything and everything. So thank you guys for getting our message out there. Obviously, it's not not one, uh, not everybody wants to get out. So, uh, by the way, make sure to go check up. Uh, I believe what is it? Power power grid down. Power up. Power up. Grid down. Uh, if you haven't seen the Tucker interview with Dennis Quaid, that video, uh, that actually did a really good job of explaining why you should be thinking about getting prepped for a grid down. And that doesn't even mention that that would be the first step of a war. That's just mentioning the events that we know are going to happen, like the solar, uh, solar events in our future. And then, uh, Dex, let's go over Iran. Huge American flag burning protests erupt as they vow revenge for the strike uh, from Israel. Right. So this is uh, this is getting very heated now. As we predicted yesterday, we told we told you you know this was going to basically uh, build up to and create this uh, turning point, so to speak, in this event in the Middle East. And I think we're seeing that right now with what just happened. So. As we reported last night, in case you didn't hear that, the um, it's now confirmed that Israel has struck a consulate building that is basically an embassy in Syria, and they were taking out a general and someone else, but it was on the embassy property, on the proper portion of the embassy. So that's technically a strike against their sovereign nation on their land. Um, it is confirmed today it was F-35, an F-35 and six uh, missiles. It was also confirmed that the U.S. had nothing to do with it. At least that's what the U.S. is saying outside of obviously selling them an F-35 and probably the, the missiles that were on it. Um, but that has created a firestorm, so to speak, of uh, protesting throughout um, Iran and other locations uh, against the West, against you know the U.S., against obviously Israel very specifically. And we're going to talk through a lot of the different things that are going on uh, as we progress through some of these articles, because there's a lot of moving pieces to this. The response has not happened yet, but it's bound to, and it will. We just don't know. Nobody's sure exactly what it may be. So, but right now, the, the, the big thing that we're talking about, in particular to this article, is that there was a massive amount of protesting there's a uh, this is a rallying cry um, for obvious reasons. Uh, anytime that happens, it just like we would probably be really upset if that happened to one of our embassies. So it, it, I want to remind people. So the, the, the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, uh, who has final say on all matters in Iran, said we will make them regretful about the crime and similar acts about that. That's how, about how it translates. Right. This is the same country that our former president actually took out Soleimani. And when he took Soleimani out, this general, another general, similar to what they just took out in this embassy, they said he they took him out because he had plans of destruction of the U.S., plans that made 2001 event look like chicken feed. Now, I want to remind you what they're saying the chatter is right now. They're saying that there is chatter that is far worse that makes 2001 look like nothing. And people forget about that statement by the former president about what they had planned. Now, uh, that was a uh, Soleimani was Iran. Soleimani, they took out in a strike and they actually did two strikes simultaneously and they took out Soleimani. They got him. The second guy, the second in command, Soleimani's right-hand man, he actually survived that day. Either way, you think that they probably have a PDF with their plan somewhere. And the leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the same gentleman who has all of the say in all of the matters in Iran, he is the same gentleman that right after that posted a video directly on his uh, on his uh, social media showing a very thought out 3d rendering a, a virtual video of a drone going into mar-a-lago uh, laser targeting our, our former prez and then having a drone take him out that was in the video that he posted on his personal social media so this guy's a little kooky this is not a normal like super professional president this is uh this is the ayatollah and 
this guy's uh he's he's working with the full deck and they're all terrorists so uh this is not good especially with the timing and that's why i want to stress like we've been telling you guys for years this is the biggest threat right now there is there's a lot of regional threats the west coast you still need to be worried about earthquakes it, 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 i guess the 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 scope of what what everyone should be concerned about and what they should be paying attention to it has grown and grown and grown and we've we've called this and when it happens we're not going to get vindication because i don't think you're going to have uh i don't think you're going to be going to youtube when all of this stuff goes down i don't think youtube will be accessible so it's also not something you need to live your life afraid about the people that say doom and gloom go ahead say doom and gloom we're adults we choose to pay attention to this exact thing this is what we are prepped for they try to make it look like you know we're bad because we're pre uh, preparing for uh, possible events and that's the key word possible i am absolutely hoping that nothing happens but in the past when we see this much chatter when we see the pattern going down this road every time it's ended up in something bad Back when I said that I believed that there would be a global demic and that it looked like every country in the world was prepping for a demic, people laughed at me. They said I was stupid. In fact, before that event, uh, it, we actually added an affiliate that for one day, we added an affiliate and said, hey, go get yourself some uh, some surgical masks. These will be helpful if this goes down. So many people say, oh, well, that will never happen, blah, blah, blah. And they gave us so much crap. We were like, okay, fine. It was like a month later, everything went down. And then people were literally uh, charging like crazy money. States required you to wear one everywhere you went. And people were getting scalped for those stupid paper masks. Uh, again, don't worry if people say uh, you're kooky. And if they do, maybe let them worry about themselves. There's a lot of people that you probably love and would love to see prepped. Try to do it the best way you can. Try to not look at it like there's ultimate doom because they they won't respond to that. You should, you know, point out to your fam friends and family members that says, hey, you know, bring up a recent event that just happened. Bring up uh, when your power went out for two days in your state or something and say, hey, you know, you should have some extra stuff back around just in case. Show them a couple of the relevant uh, articles going on and say, yeah, this isn't going too well. You should probably get some stuff. Hey, do you have car insurance? You do? Well, you don't get your car insurance because you know you're going to get in a crash. You'd get it because you may. Well, we may have a huge problem here. Do whatever you can without scaring the crap out of them and get them to prep. Um, because right now, it's it's that time. It's it's. What else can you say? There's only so much proof we can show you that this is not going down a, a good path. So I, I hope that people, if you are not prepped now, that you start learning what to do if you're not prepped. Because there are ways you can get around having, you know, you don't have to have a $10,000 pallet of food. You just have to have the skills and the talent to deal without it. So that's another thing we're going to ask some of our, uh, our guests is, you know, how do you deal if you don't? have everything if it so if it happens tomorrow do you have three months of food do you have six months if you don't we're going to try to figure out how how we deal with it then uh books are really important too. get get books on how to do this stuff because there won't be an you know a, a search engine there won't be duck duck go uh and then the dod u.s assures iran had no involvement in this strike even though it involves an f-35 it says the JB administration was notified just minutes before this embassy was struck. Uh, the major Israeli airstrikes on the Iranian embassy complex in Damascus on Monday. U.S. and Israeli officials have told Axios, however, that the Israeli side wasn't asking for a green light. So they're saying they didn't check with daddy. They just did it themselves. Uh, U.S. on Tuesday directly communicated to Iran that it had no involvement, which I'm sure even if they didn't, do you think that they believe that? Probably not. 
It says, or advanced knowledge of the strike on the embassy annex, which took out top Iranian commanders, including Brigadier General Mohammad Reza Zahedi, which we've covered. This is the guy, one of the guys who took over for previous psychos, uh, who reportedly oversaw the IRGC Quds Force operations in, in Lebanon. So this is... Uh, this is something people should be paying attention. And by tomorrow, I bet you there's going to be a lot more people talking about uh, all of this, uh, all of this happening right here. Uh, majority of people aren't going to understand how crazy important that strike was. Um, and then it did bring up Zahadi's death marks, the highest ranking official killed since 2020, the taking out of Kasim Soleimani. Now, they actually blame some of the bigger events, different things that have happened here, and they don't have proof, but they blame some of the bigger hacks, cyber events. That, that's what's crazy. If they if they are to do a big, 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 big event, it would take years to plan, and they would do it um, in a way that it would make a mark. And that's unfortunately what everyone thinks is, is about to happen. If that would be the case, there would need to be a framework set up beforehand. You would need to have people inside the country. You would have to have all sorts of things done. If you look at the last few years, it seems like it may go up pretty high in the in the spectrum of things. So this is why uh, this is why it's pretty important that you follow what's going on right now. Um. Let's go over to the chat here real quick. I told you this today's show is not for the faint-hearted. Um, let's go over to the chat and let's lighten up the mood for a second. Let's say hello to all of the wonderful people in chat. We have lots of great people. Thank you so much for making it to the show today. We have Jordan Brock. We have uh, Quantum Edge Media Official. We actually just did a video over on uh, Marfugal News on that. Uh, we'll make sure to attach that to the website, which just a reminder, all of the stuff that we're covering here, and this is useful for telling your family and friends about what's going on. You can go over to marfuglenews.com and you can actually, uh, you can grab our, uh, our bibliography. So every single show, if you remember a show, you're like, wow, that's crazy. I wish my family would know that you can go to our website and then you can actually go to any show, click on it like tonight. And then it will bring you to a full bibliography of all of the articles, every single article, tweet, video, picture, document. If there's videos, we have that there as well. It takes uh, it takes time every single day to make sure that you have every source from everything that we put on there. So make sure to utilize that. But especially use that to share. If there's an important article you want people to see, like, hey, the U.S. is ordering a ton of night gear vision. They're doing uh, special drills. They're doing... Uh, you know, crisis drills, National Guard is checking bags in New York subways, that kind of thing. Everything is available over on our website. So utilize it. You can even use the search bar in the upper right hand corner. If there's something you remember that would be helpful, you can use that as a tool to help your family get prepped. Uh, and you, by the way, that's just to share somebody else's news. Use our website to help your friends and family. You don't have to share our website. Share the original link with them. You can just copy and paste it right right from there and, and hand them that. All right. Um, yeah, so we, lots of people. We've got uh, South Carolina in the house, B&B Home. What is happening? Copper from Oregon Coast. Uh, let's see here. Shells Spells. What is happening? Uh, Gainesville, Florida. Nice to see you. Nightman's wife, Peggy C., Tracy Q. from Buffalo, New York. Crazy what you guys have going on in uh, in New York, New York. And then also you have it going on in your subway. It's nuts. Central Texas, Ryan M. Sky House. We've got uh, Lord Andrew from Central Florida. East Central Missouri in the house. Fildo Young from T uh, Tucson. We have Cascade Foothills, Washington. Nice to see you. Locals. Um, and then William H. White Mountains East AZ. Arizona in the house. We've got Chicago. Tammy Lee is also from Arizona. Anchorage is here. Uh, be careful. Also, the whole ring of fire is, is uh, think it's, it's going to be lit up here soon. And then Fort Pierce, Florida, Decatur, what is happening? Uh, we have California, Adria, Indianapolis, what is happening? Minnesota, uh, Teton, Teton, Washington. I have, isn't that a small town, Teton? I feel like that's where something is. 
that one of the is that where the crack is i'm there's a crack in the earth i feel like it's there uh maybe i'm wrong though maybe that's snake ridge um what's up my fellow peasants <laughs> copa and adelasia what a beautiful name uh still my job uh let's see here tammy lee donna honey s nort and uh saffron bay everybody Bobby Sue, there is a literal crack in the earth. Look up the crack in the earth in Washington. I believe it's Snake Ridge. It's one of one of a few in the world that has opened up and it keeps getting bigger. It's yeah, no joke. I'll I'll try to pull it up later. Uh, Dex, uh, if you want to, uh, and I'm sure you might have statements on the DoD assuring that they have nothing to do with it. This is really alarming i don't think that they're going to believe us i i don't think they're going to believe the u.s has nothing to do with it no i i don't think so at all and and officially as you were mentioning earlier um the Ay ayatollah has come out now and said absolutely uh has vowed revenge um after the event and he said that uh basically that the evil regime will be punished by the hands of our brave warriors uh, will make them regret this crime and uh, the like by God's grace. Um, the other uh, person there, the Iranian president, also said the crime won't go unanswered. And they've also mentioned that they, when, and I don't remember which quote this was, but they mentioned it wasn't just against um, Israel, it was also against their supporters, which easily points the finger right back to the U.S. So I don't think that we're out of the question and, and even later you'll see that even the uk thinks they may be part of the question and we'll, we'll talk about that too but you know everybody that is supporting um the actions and supporting the equipment and supporting the military in in the idf specifically anybody that's supporting that is going to be at risk for this i don't necessarily think and this is just my personal opinion i don't think they are going to respond directly out of their own country. They have way too many um, capabilities that are outside in what you would think of as a proxy or as you know, we, we label them in our media as T groups, but those organizations that are spread out throughout the Middle East, mostly you know, the heads up in North and in Lebanon, and of course the one inside um, the strip that's being uh, up against uh, the IDF right now, but I think what you're going to see is probably a, a massive response from them, or maybe even down in Yemen with the Houths. So I think that's what's going to happen probably in a greater level. But we don't know. It, it, it just seems very difficult to think that they would. It's difficult for me to think that they're going to risk launching from their own land um, in because that's just going to absolutely open the door up immediately for a response from the U.S., from Israel directly to them. It will it'll make it'll it'll change everything. I don't know if they're willing to do that at this point, but I am positive they're willing to make some sort of an effect response, maybe in the U.S., maybe in other Western nations, as well as very well, very likely in Israel. I, it just makes total sense that that would have happened there, whatever whatever their response is going to be. And whatever their response may be, uh, it, it might not be good news for any of us here either. So <clears throat> we will continue to cover it if we know anything. Make sure to sign up also for our email list over at marfuglenews.com. Uh, that is an email list we do not use lightly. We use it for very important notices or if we're going out of town or if we have something that could be helpful, or if we have information that we absolutely know is true, that's the system we would use. And then uh, the strip, what we know about the Israeli strike that took the lives of seven world central kitchen workers in the strip. Dex, why don't you go over this one and I'll, I'll yeah. go over the next. So, they're just, it's uh, one thing after another now that is just raising the ire of the enemy. Um, and in this case, it's not necessarily directly um, against Iran, but it's definitely not setting uh, a good note and a good light with any type of support that the IDF may have gotten from the rest of the world, even though we've seen they haven't been getting much, especially at the UN. And even with the US has been kind of wishy-washy with them uh, as of the last few weeks. So 
what happened was the um, a, a group of aid workers was leaving their location and literally as they left their location to go distribute uh, disaster relief, they were they came under fire. And it's now been admitted by um, Israel that they did do that and they said it was unintentional. They didn't mean to, it just happened. It's, uh, it was tragic and, um, you know, it was an unintentional uh, taking of innocent people that shouldn't have happened. Now, you know, a lot of questions have come up from this. I, we were listening to that press uh, earlier. They were asking, hey, were any of the weapons used during this? Some of where they were supplied by the U.S.? Um, and of course, the U.S. doesn't, the DOD did not want to respond to that. They said, we're not talking about that. You can go talk to, to Netanyahu about it. Um, because, you know, and, and at the same time, this is also one of the sticking points with our administration is they want to continue the aid and continue um, support for the civilians there. And they're trying to build that pier. Remember the pier we've talked about? That's supposed to be done sometime in April or May. Um, and a lot of questions were being asked, well, what kind of security is going to be provided then for those workers that may be working from that pier or from ships or going into land and bringing in that? So, you know, this kind of uh, accident or unintentional consequence, as um, it, Benjamin said, you know, it does bring up a lot of light to that and a lot of people are going to be frustrated with it. So, yeah, not necessarily setting the, a great stage for the events that are trying to continue to unfold in Israel and their whole notion of continuing their charge into Rafah. Yeah. So <clears throat> it, it's, it's almost like one thing after another makes it to where it, it's going to make it difficult for Israel to have a lot of people on their side at this point, especially with how they have covered all of the events uh, worldwide. And then Swetnam Ministries, would it be crazy if their revenge took place on April 8th? It would explain a lot. Swetnam Ministries, I think it's implied by a lot. They they're, they worry about that just because of the, of the amount of people that are all going to be in singular places. They're telling people to stay home, and that's just because of so many people being out. They're trying to reduce the amount of just regular chaos that happens with that many people. Uh, so yeah, if, if you add in anything else into the mix, like the thousands and thousands, along with the millions of people that have come in across the border, there's thousands of bad guys in mixed in with that. Uh, we know for a fact, they have declared that there is a certain number per hundred that are bad guys, like really bad, bad guys. Those guys, what do you think they're doing? Setting up shop and they're like, ah, I want to be a... I want to be an astronaut. Uh, you know, I want to work my way up and be a firefighter. Probably not. They're probably, you know, going to Home Depot to make, you know, horrible things that take other people's things away. Callie, thank you so much, Sweat and Ministry. If I'm not mistaken, they renamed the comet again to Mother of Dragons. I don't know. They, you know what? I actually believe I've seen a, a Mother of Dragons uh, comet. What they are, uh, what Swetnam is talking about is the the Millennium Falcon comet, the 12P Pons Brooks comet that's going to be visible on April 8th, was the Millennium Falcon comet. But I guess as it swings around, it gets close to the sun, or supposedly they say that this is what happens. It gets heated up by the sun, it burns off more gases, and it creates a different look or whatever. They say this time around, they called it the Devil Comet. Same day they came out with the devil disease that makes people see people's demonic faces. Uh, same day that we learned about CERN and National Guard and all of this during April 8th. Uh, but they called it the devil comet. Out of all days to do it, that day was just so strange. Um, and and now you've got this NASA mission named APEP, the the serpent, whatever else. And then they would name the comet again to the mother of dragons. I don't know if that's true. I'll have to go check that, but either way, calling it the devil comet, renaming it. It's just weird. And then sweat. Hey, everyone. Glad, glad y'all are here. Just wanted to let you know how much love you guys and appreciate all you do. Adam Dex and mods. Thank you. Troll Slayer says, okay, who gave them all these flags for this says quote staged. 
uh, Troll Slayer. That's I. I don't know if you said that before or after I said what I said, but it, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. And I think everybody kind of looked at that and went, "Okay, so they have got these." You know what I mean? Like, who's is there a print shop in town? Like, if if you've seen the conditions of that the the area that they're talking about, it's really bad. I mean, you've got literal mud shacks in that neighborhood. And somehow they're getting like these nicely printed, very visible from 200 feet away, pictures ironed on to these flags. It's it's kind of weird of Putin uh, he, mentioning if you missed the beginning, Haiti, um, Haiti has these uh, protesters with Russian flags begging Russian Russia to come in and save them. Sounds like a setup for something, but this is my opinion. Captain America, God bless you all. Thank you so much, Captain America. Uh, and then BNB says, long time listener, appreciate all you do, Adam Dex and mods. I know there's lots of behind the scenes uh, that do to make a great show. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, it is not, uh, it, uh, compliments like that, we take really, really uh, kindly. Thank you so much. K. Parker Frazier, Love and Blessings family. Thank you. And K. Parker Frazier, it's lovely to see you here yet again. Um, okay. And let's see here. Lebanon, Iran may launch. Look at this. Another. And by the way, this is, I think, the fourth time we've heard something compared directly to October 7th. Uh, Dex, they say. Yeah. So they uh, may launch a style attack. Instead of going through everything in this article, which is all of the same story we've sort of talked about, I think there's a couple of key things here that are important for you to know. And it's this notion that they're suggesting another style of event that happened in October. But in this case, they're suggesting that could be coming from the north, uh, which is what we've talked about. There's been a lot of rocket fire back and forth ever since then in small amounts, uh, minor escalations between um, the Hez and uh, the IDF. So whether or not that um, it, that could be one of the areas. The other thing, though, that's in here is that they could even hit targets in the UK. Now, mind you, this is the, a UK uh, oriented um, media outlet. So they're writing to the UK when they're talking about this, but they're also taking it from their point of view, saying, hey, we're in the, the crosshairs, too, so to speak. So we need to be worried about just like I was talking earlier, like, you know, the US, you know, something could happen. There's plenty of opportunity and plenty of potential sleepers that are here. That have come in probably by way of Venezuela, which has connections to Hez, um, which is obviously funded by Iran, that, you know, we all need to be worried about what is the response and where will they take it? And if they'll just keep it isolated in, in the Middle East there, or if they will take it uh, to the broader countries. So um, that's their concern in the UK as well. So two, two main points from here, and, and those are them. And the the countries that are getting elevated, if you pay attention, Venezuela and all of the big news surrounding Venezuela tells you that they're getting involved in world events where Venezuela comes out and does a vote of saying like, hey, you know, should we take over Guyana, our neighbor? That says to me that they're working with much bigger countries and that there's there's things going on behind the scenes, obviously. Uh, but But they are probably... Uh, able to call in favors. They're doing something for these other big countries. Mind you, they may be set up. We know that Venezuelans are coming in through the South and that there's these bad guys mixed in. And we know this because the actual stats, the people they're catching compared to the people they're getting, getting away, you're seeing one in every this many and one in this many uh, that are getting through that are really, really, really bad guys. And they're connected with Hezbollah going through Venezuela. So obviously there's something big going on it down there in Venezuela with Venezuela and Guyana, but th- having them involved says they are obviously uh, doing a back and forth with other countries. What are they doing as a favor? you right. Why the newfound confidence? It's, uh, it's getting kind of obvious. And before we move on, if you don't have a backup power supply, so say if everything does go down, the power goes out, all of a sudden everything is down, well, there is usually uh, the one thing you go to, and you go and get yourself a generator. Uh, 
The reason why we suggest you go with the solar generator is because this can create power. It can create power without gas or any storable uh, resource. All you have to do is put solar panels out in the sun and you start uh, gaining power. Uh, as far as solar generators, they vary in quality. Uh, but this one doesn't. Uh, this one is one of the highest quality generators on the market. It is made by a, a company that is currently just, they just won the STTR phase two contract and gonna be shipping these tacticals out to the US Army. The Army doesn't care if it's pretty, they care if it turns on and turns on every time. They care about its reliability. Is it able to be tough and to deal with the situations and scenarios that they run into in the Army? So again, those same scenarios are all the same scenarios that you would be looking for for SHTF. It has a 1500 pound latch system. It's got a reinforced uh, steel frame, it, uh, heaters in every battery to make sure it can run during extreme cold temperatures. Uh, and it is expandable and modular. So if you want a solar generator with a single battery, you wanna take it to work and use it for you know, powering your drills, building a fence or something, uh, or if you want it to have 30 or 50 batteries, you can do that as well and have an entire wall of lithium batteries. As far as the mod uh, modular uh, ability, you can actually add in bricks just like Lego and add in features. So you can create the system that you want. You don't have to have extra fluff and extra space being taken up if you don't need it. And you can quickly just unlatch, click, click, boom, and take it with you. It's very, very cool as far as the flexibility of it, and it is one of the highest quality out there as far as uh, it, it from everything the, down to the paint. It, it's absolutely one of the best generators out there. Go to marfuglenews.com slash energy and make sure to use the code marfugal. Being completely upfront, the one downside is the weight. And even, uh, again, the weight is the, the, the problem right now. It's about a six month wait. It is completely worth it. Um, again, the reason for that too is lithium is being fought over by the world and guess which country controls a ton of it. That resource is being held and hoarded. So again, you can get one on Monday from a company, but make sure to look up that company that you get it from. The majority of the ones that compare directly to this that are expandable, that can do all of that, they are a company that's a direct front for a country that you would really not want to get something for in, in the case of a World War III scenario. Let's just say if, if on Monday you got this and on Wednesday uh, SHTF happens, is it going to work on Thursday or is it going to be remotely shut down or something? You know this won't be, so go over to marfuglenews.com slash energy and make sure to use the code marfugal. It's also water and dust resistant. You can't really go wrong with it. Go over to marfuglenews.com slash energy, code marfugal to save money and to help us out at the same time. But again, all of our affiliates are something that we believe in and that we believe will either save your life, help your life during a crisis, or make you more comfortable through it. So go check it out. And then, uh, of course, Israel muzzles foreign press, or at least that is the claim. Uh, Dex, they're putting yeah, a muzzle will, on. And th this will sort of wrap up the Middle Eastern stuff, guys. I know we've talked quite a bit about it, but there's a lot going on right now. But one of the other things that's happening at the same time is there's been a big push and a signing of a bill to actually boot Al Jazeera out of uh, Israel. So they don't like the reporting that's coming from them. So they wanted to push them out. But in the portion of that, the bill allows them, I think, to potentially push out any foreign media that they deem to be a threat to national security. Now, uh, the author of this is coming at it from a journalistic point of view saying, why wouldn't you push me? And they were really talking more towards our, towards our um, administration that was talking about this. I think Jeanine, uh, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre was uh, talking about it and they were using that as the reference, but saying, why wouldn't the our administration here in the US push back on them and say, why not have a more open and free press? But um, that's the, the question that's sort of floating around right now is this, you know, we've seen the same thing. If we want to rewind a, two years ago to the start of the event in UKR, what did they do there? 
they started to put a uh, stranglehold on journalism so that they could control the narrative of what happened in their conflict zone. Um, and we've seen that be very much widely used in UKR. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's 100% what's happening here in Israel, uh, but certainly the fact that you're they're, they're pushing one out leads everyone to question, well, where do you draw the line? You know, if you're going to throw one out, are you going to throw any, uh, you know, are you going to start throwing others out and start controlling the media? Now, mind you, a lot of other people don't worry about it or don't think it even matters because much of the media, at least the mainstream, is some to some belief is controlled anyway. So take it all with a grain of salt. But that's the last and the other final piece that's sort of playing into this mix right now. And it does look akin to what we saw in other locations. And we see so much about this conflict, but with UKR, it's like, yeah, there's tons of clips of like a drone shot of a guy walking and boom, or there's, uh, but there's no, the, the over the shoulder kind of video. Do you remember in the beginning of the conflict, they would not let journalists from around the world in bed with UKR. They, they they said, nope, nope. And then when they did, it was almost like everything was very, like it was, uh, like a, like it was set up, like not set up in the way set up, but like they got to choose which light they showed you. Um, and of course, remember R- RT, uh, the Russian news, it was, uh, taken off of many platforms. They're like, well, we're not going to share that. It seems like we're seeing kind of history repeat itself. But what does that say? It, it Are we headed towards somewhere even worse? And then Philippines says, China's coercive, aggressive actions discussed with top U.S. security advisor. By the way, Philippines has spoken up louder, louder than they have previously. Philippines keeps getting kind of the equivalent of punked by China. They've had, uh, they've been straight up sprayed by hoses. I mean, that's kind of in the punking territory. These Coast Guard ships of China will come right up to a ship supplying their their uh, soldiers, and they'll just spray the crap out of them to the point where their uh, windshield got busted and, and injured them. Uh, obviously, the Philippines can't match China in a naval conflict. Uh, but it seems like they have been louder in the last couple of weeks. This is also after meetings and visits by U.S. officials. Now they're kind of saying the uh, exact same thing. Philippines on Tuesday said its national security advisor and the U.S. counterpart discussed coercive, aggressive, deceptive actions by Beijing in the South China Sea as diplomatic row intensifies between the two Asian neighbors. Philippine National Security Advisor Eduardo Ano expressed his appreciation for the United States' continued assurances and reaffirmation of ironclad commitment to their alliance. It says the phone call on Monday was on the heels of a series of maritime run-ins and heated verbal exchanges between China and the Philippines that has triggered concerns about an escalation at sea. Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the president, uh, said last week there would be, again, this is what I was talking about, countermeasures against aggression by China's Coast Guard, while Beijing accused the Philippines of treachery and reneging on a promise to tow away an old naval vessel grounded intentionally on a disputed shoal. Now, I showed you the other night the map that China claims physically goes over the 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 standard of what countries are supposed to have as far as their ocean outside their country. China's goes over not only the Philippines, goes over Malaysia, uh, goes over Vietnam. It, it uh, also goes over the Philippines. It, it goes over all of them. It's like China's loop goes over all of it. Uh, so see, here's here's Vietnam right here. Show you. So China's up here. Vietnam should have all of this water. Well, China claims all the way down this line. You have the Philippines should have all the way out to here. They claim all of this down here. Uh, even down below, you have uh, this area that's claimed now. And they've actually, and then Taiwan is supposed to have all of this over here. They want to claim that as well. Uh, there's one I feel like I'm missing. Oh, um, it, all, all of this over here. It's it's all now uh, controlled 
and basically uh, uh, trolled by the Chinese Coast Guard. And they have the largest navy in the world. So they're basically pushing their weight around, saying we're going to take all of it. They're, they're claiming ground that they have, there's absolutely no excuse if you look at a map why they should have power over it. They're just basically saying, we're taking it. And they're also telling the rest of the world, you have no business over here. You stick to your side of the planet. We'll stick to ours. But they're basically punking their neighbors. No matter how you look at it, they are trying to take sea that's not theirs. And they've went so far to where they've built islands where there were none. They've set up entire bases and homes and people living there because that was their key to doing this. The Spratly Islands started up as just little pieces of dirt up. They took special trolling ships that dug dirt and sand off of the bottom of the ocean, piled it up until it was no longer a pile. It was literally an island made out of nothing. And then they started making airways uh, in uh, uh, airfields. And then they started putting SAM missiles and barracks and housing and businesses. Apparently, they have restaurants on these islands. And all of these are made so they can say, well, we claim all of it. If you look at where the Spratly Islands are, that is exactly why they are claiming a lot of this. They're saying now that China has these islands. I mean, look at some of these islands. Uh, let's see the Spratly. Look at this. These islands, um, not these specific ones, some of these bigger ones, they literally have airfields and barracks. It's insane. And they've created all of these in the last 10 years, not even six years. I remember when the first one, they were like, oh, uh, they might be building here. I knew from day one. You can go back and watch it on my channel. I said, they're building islands. They're building a forward operating base. And that's exactly what they are now. They are literally forward operating bases with military and even naval purposes. So this is, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors, what this, these talks are about. But, but it seems like the framework is being set up for, uh, at the very least, uh, some exchanges of, of bureaucratic uh, red tape cutting. Something is, is happening there. And then Dex, uh, JB holds call with China Xi ahead of the Japanese and uh, Filipino meeting. Yeah, so what do you think? Uh, was he getting the uh, marching orders or giving uh, getting the permission or... Just telling him what he's going to say. I don't know, but the uh, you know this is a this is the call. Uh, he had the phone call between Washington and them before he has this big meeting with Japan and Philippines. So he did speak with uh, Xi Jinping on Tuesday morning. Um, it is the follow up call since they met in California. So I guess they haven't spoken at all since then. This is. Uh, but the timing of the call comes ahead of the critical meeting between Washington and allies from the Indo-Pacific, which China views as provocative. This includes a state visit by Japan's Prime Minister Fumo Kishida on April 10th, uh, right after the eclipse, and the first of its kind trilateral meeting between Japan, the Philippines, and the U.S. on April 11th. So that's the big deal that's going to be happening here. Um, U.S. alliances and partnerships are not about China, but oftentimes uh, Chinese actions motivate much of what we talk about, a senior administration official told reporters. So that's the official stance. It's not about them, but it really is about them. But that is something uh, certainly well within China's control, what it says and does, and the impact it has on the U.S. partners and allies throughout the region. So uh, if they don't believe that this big meeting has anything to do with China, then they're totally mistaken, and I think that's why China is so upset about it. And I don't know if Biden was calling to, you know, cheer him up and say, don't worry about it, pal. We got it covered. Let's go get some ice cream. Or uh, if he's, you know, really being a strong, stern president. Wish Who knows? We, wish we had that recording. And there were kids crawling on my legs. And she's like, we, I thought we were talking about, about uh, our a treaty. <laughs> What I, I was uh, zooming in here and the reason why is it's so insane to look 1.4 billion people in China and a lot of it is concentrated in um, 
I think it was like eight cities or something. If you look at how everywhere is, everywhere is a vertical building. Everywhere, like the, uh, let, let me reload the mark here. Look at this. So when you go into this, it's like every place you look, you see these giant uh, apartment complex at least 10 or 12 stories high. Uh, but in some areas, it's like there's these huge groupings of just giant, 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 um, like, look at this. Just everywhere you look, massive groupings of just apartment, 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 apartment. It's so crazy how many people uh, are living in some of these cities. Uh, you know, like New York, we consider the big city. It's like that's everywhere there. Everywhere they have these massive, massive uh, living neighborhoods. Like this reminds me of something out of Call of Duty. Just crazy, crazy big um apartment complexes and you know that the owners of almost all of these buildings all of the money then filters up to the top to the ccp it's crazy how uh how packed in some of these cities are it's, it's so much so it's it's crazy that they have ghost cities that are just completely unoccupied uh, it, it's nuts to me very fascinating to say the least uh, let's see here. Uh, thank you again, Troll Slayer. Thank you, Lavender Lattes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for supporting Independent. It says tried to donate last night, but too late. Love you guys. And love you guys' hard work in being of this group. Lavender Lattes. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you. Uh, and then thank you, Stephen McMahon. Off to work, boys and girls. Stay salty. Love y'all. Well, thank you. And then Caitlin Hulu, husband and I love you from Seattle. K Mark and Prince. Uh, Caitlin Hulu, thank you, and and uh, it's great to have locals here. You, I don't know if you have wind outside like we do, but it's been getting crazy. Not like Dex. By the way, how is it there in Georgia? Are you guys good? Uh, for now, yeah. That big storm that was below me, it sort of went just underneath and scooped around, thanks to all the prayers. But there's another giant one coming. The big one is still yet to hit. Yeah, as we said, if you joined in late, uh, he's got a tornado watch in Georgia. So right before we started, it was massive. It was, I, I thought my kids were upstairs smashing on the floor, um, but it was a huge thunderous boom uh, on on Dex's side. So just ask for positive vibes mo uh, or prayers for uh, Dex's safety. That wouldn't that be crazy if we were live or something and a tornado, you know, freaking just rolled right through. I'm sure I, I've never I've never been anywhere close to a tornado, as you know, Caitlin, uh, and uh, Kay and Mark, we and Prince, we don't have uh, tornadoes here. A couple years ago, though, I will say this: we had a tornado. What was it? Thirty minutes outside of Seattle, and that was just nuts. We don't have tornadoes. Period. I've been through a few, and and up close and personal with with at least two. See, I've been through earthquakes. Have you been through earthquakes? I uh, never. And I yeah. used to go to California for work ages ago, all the time. And never in my life, the only one I've ever experienced was here in Georgia, and I was sleeping when it happened, so I didn't really feel it. So, and uh, I've told this story too many times, but during the two thousand one Nesqually earthquake, it was a seven seven plus earthquake. Uh, the whole I was in school and the whole road it, it was actually it looked worse than that video from Taiwan we showed you earlier uh, on the other show but the the road outside was like this and we had one of those big 32 inch school TVs back before they were flat it was they were big and they had a massive massive super strong arm hanging off the wall in our classroom that TV bounced so hard that it pulled out the whole bracket. And the, the brackets aren't like the, the new TVs, like the little tiny ones. These were giant steel arms that held huge, heavy TVs. The thing just snapped like it was nothing, and it almost fell on one of my classmates. Our teacher, his name was Ben, little tiny guy. I'm not kidding you, like 4'11", tiny, tiny, tiny guy from Texas runs straight out the door and we have these huge 12 foot windows next to us and we're on a hill in Seattle 
and straight up runs out, runs out, runs past all of our windows. All of us, he didn't tell us anything to do. We all get under our desks. Everybody just knew we've been through drills and stuff like that. We get under our desks. I'm sitting there cracking jokes saying, ride the wave, dude. I was actually seriously scared, but I was the class clown. I was like, ride the wave, dude. I remember my classmate, uh, Brittany, got mad. She's like, shut up. She's like crying. I'm using humor as like a feel good. Our teacher runs screaming, ah, runs right past us. Didn't He didn't get fired because of that. But he said when he got back, I'll never forget this. He goes, I'm from Texas. I've been through tornadoes. I've been through fires. I've been through everything. I didn't know what to do. I'm so sorry. He just literally left his students there and just bounced on us. He's like, I've dealt with tornadoes. I've dealt with this. I didn't know what to do in an earthquake. And I'm like thinking, you know, if I, if I experienced a tornado, could I say the same? I probably wouldn't know what to do either. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Yeah, my one of my tornado experiences was, was similar to that. I was in school. School had just let out high school, and I was going into the gym because we were going to for sports after school. I was in the football locker room, and all the other kids are going to get on the bus or go to their cars and all that, and this tornado literally hits the high school. And I'm, like, opening the door to look out to, over the football field from the gym, and I'm seeing the entire, you know, most high schools, I would assume everywhere else, it's where it is down here. You have your concrete bleachers on one side for the home team, and you have these cheap metal bleachers for the visiting team on the other side. It literally lifted the entire metal bleachers over the football field, twisted it up like a twist tie, and dropped it right in the middle of the football field. And I'm sitting there watching that out the door, and I was like, okay, I'm shutting the door, and I'm going back in and finding some cover. But yeah, oh, heck a lot no. of kids got hurt. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. A lot of kids got, some kids got slammed into buses and things like that trying to get out, and yeah, it wasn't fun, not at all. The Nest Quali, um, we had one student get hurt, and they were in a downtown Seattle Starbucks, and they had a Chihuly piece of artwork that dropped and broke, and they got, uh, they got cut from the glass. But they could have been killed. This was a huge installation of, of Jehuli's that dropped. Um, so they, they got really lucky, actually. I think they got minor cuts. But I remember that was like the talk. Like the one class that was on a field trip was at a Starbucks during that. That one was bad. And by the way, this is why that's why I got into Cascadia, all of that. I First of all, that earthquake was scary. But that was a six point three or 6.4 and i think it got downgraded to a 6.1 when you go up to 7.0 they say just a 7.0 that same earthquake the entire waterfront in seattle k mark and prince would have fallen off into the water it would have caught fire the whole pier down in in the downtown seattle would roll into the water it would be gone seattle's built on lick li- uh uh liquefaction would happen in seattle because seattle burnt down in 1907 the great fire and they built new seattle on top of it to the point where if you go to seattle go to the underground tour they'll show you they have preserved parts of old seattle and they built on top of it new one but on top of that it's soft ground when we have a 9.0 earthquake downtown seattle is going to be like a i I think it's just going to be a pit Uh, I think the most realistic vision of Seattle after an earthquake is in how it ends in, uh, on the Netflix movie, how it ends, uh, everything they, they say the debris from all of the, uh, brick buildings and, and all of the building materials will all just go poof up like smoke. The 6.3 that happened, uh, pioneer square, all the brick buildings, none of them were reinforced with steel. So they just crumbled. It was really bad. Uh, bricks fell onto cars. It, it was um, people perished, I think, from the bricks. Other than that, though, that was we got away clean lucky compared to if we had just a couple points higher. It would have been catastrophic. When we get the big, big one from a seven to an eight, it's a giant difference. Seven, about a minute long uh, earthquake. A, a nine is a five minute earthquake we're going to move 45 feet in one direction. If you're standing somewhere after the end of it, you're going to be 45 feet in one direction. The whole North American plate will. I mean, it's really crazy. So, but, and that's a crazy thing. 
There are bigger things than that. It's going to be the largest disaster the world has seen next to the world at war. I mean, it's it's going to be, an, as far as natural disasters go, I don't think Japan will be able to touch it. And that's the crazy part. It will be the same size as Japan, but we have all of the metropolises that we built, we built right on a freaking uh, subduction zone. It's going to be pandemonium. And then Baltimore, a channel has opened vessels clearing wreckage at the Baltimore Bridge collapse site, which this whole collapse thing was just nuts. The the cargo ship that hit the bridge, if you haven't seen that video, if you've been under a rock, it it's lost power supposedly and then crashed into this bridge. The bridge collapsed, trapping several very important uh, military cargo ships. Uh, but w when that happened... Uh, it, it caused a problem, not for days, not for weeks, not even for months. They say it might be a two-year thing. Uh, but now they have opened up vessels. So they've created a small pocket so people can get through or boats. Uh, but it is still going to be a giant process. Uh, I'm assuming that this is close to what it still looks like. Uh, Dex, now that they're opened up, at least they have a way through. And how, what is this, a week later, a week and a half? Well, and this is a caveat, too. This is not for shipping. This is only to allow crews that are undertaking the complicated work uh, to be able to get through. So they opened up a very small channel just for vessels clearing debris. Now, obviously, they want to get to the next phase, which is making a larger section open so they can get the stuff out. But they're not there yet. This is a long process. Um, but this is progress at the same time. It's not like uh, we're here and nothing has happened. So at least they are getting somewhere. But uh, we're still a little ways away from, I think, having, you know, some of those stuck container ships that are in there, some of those stuck military ships that are behind this debris area from being able to get out. And if you notice behind that, do you see all those cranes? Those are to import things. Uh, I'm pretty sure those are all, uh, I think all those guys are on uh, leave right now. <laughs> or they're just sitting around. I guess time to lean, time to clean. And supposedly the f the folks that work on this boat are it, it's still there, right? Is that ship still there? I, I'm. Yes, it's there. And I think those are the cranes pulling up debris. No, no, no. The ones in the background. I don't think those those are their built-in uh, cranes, right? Are those those aren't the cranes? No, that's where the the bridge is, which is in the <clears> middle <throat> of the water. No, I know behind it, the white cranes. Those aren't on boats, are they? That's too close to be behind it, off on the land. The land's way back there. It's right there, working on the bridge. They brought in all those cranes. But those look like the cranes that are set up uh, on our port. Aren't those in, in a, all the pictures of it, including the first day? I don't know. Those look like they're on land. If, if they are, that's insane that they would be able to move those uh, there. This one I on mean, the, you, the go, left go, looks like something that might be mobile. But well, those, go, to the, go back to the map. Let's see. It's pretty far. I mean, the, the containers and the shipping area is further in from where the bridge is. So I'm pretty sure those are the cranes they brought in. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so let's let's look here. We can actually see. No way. Wait. Isn't this? No, no, I think I think it's a Yeah, no, no. The, that's these cranes, C Dex. So that that port is completely um No, that's too far away for it to be the there is that type of crane. It's compression. It's compression though, Dex. So so see from this angle if you look at it from this angle with a long uh, lens, I can literally create this. I bet that's a 500 millimeter lens. So if you go right past this, you get to that. See? These are exactly the same as this. See? It's a... It's a well, then where are the cranes they brought in? There aren't any. <laughs> no, we've already reported they had three in there, and they were waiting on another one that was going to come Oh, in. I don't think they look like that. They probably look closer to what those military ships look like. Uh, that picture, I can match it up directly with these. See? There's one, two, three, four. And if you go to the picture, one, two, three, four. So that that's compression on a really, really insanely $12,000 um, 
lens. So yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Um, but that but but think about that. That means this port right here, this port, this is the satellite images, right? All of this, all of these guys aren't working. This whole port is just basically sitting there. This is gathering dust right now. Fifteen million dollars a day. Yeah, that, that's that. This is incredibly painful to the U.S., which is already dealing with. All, and by the way, we haven't talked about this in a week. The the freaking uh, gold price, Dex. Did you see the current gold price? Can you look up the what the current current is? It was oh, yeah. over. It keeps going up. It was over twenty three hundred dollars. We talked about this two weeks ago. That when the gold and the Bitcoin goes up like that, that means major moves are happening. The the what is the 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 cap on on gold? Isn't it like fifteen trillion dollars or something like that? You're you're talking about major major money has just moved into gold. When you see all the folks like Zuckerberg, twenty twenty two nine fifty one, twenty two ninety one and fifty cents right yeah, now. Yeah, so it's it's ten dollars short of twenty three hundred dollars, and it just keeps going. It it's ha that's actually down a, about twenty bucks. I think it, it surpassed twenty three hundred yesterday or something like that. That that tells you that people are taking money out of the dollar and putting it into gold in huge amounts. Not to mention countries like China that are hoarding it, uh, other countries that are f fire selling everything and putting their money into gold. And, and think about China. All they back when it was at seventeen hundred or eighteen hundred or whatever, they they bought way 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 more than they usually do. Remember we covered that? They bought um, like a year's worth in, in a single month. It, it, all of that has gone up like it, just an incredible, incredible amount. And I don't think it's going to go back down. The gold is tied in with the value of the dollar too. At least that's what what I believe. I don't know. I'm not a gold expert, but... I believe it's pretty well tied into the the signs of uh, the times for the dollar. And then Ukrainian drones hit Russia's third largest oil refinery, prompting White House anger. Dex, what the heck? Uh, this is yet another big event, and now it's it's of course towards uh, Russia. Oh. Yeah, oil is is climbing just like gold, uh, but for other reasons. And the interesting thing here is, you know, this was a very deep strike on U UKR's part. They went about 800 miles uh, into Russia. Um, it's hitting the third largest refinery. Fortunately, at this point, it doesn't seem like there's any major damage. But the, here's the interesting part. The interesting part is the U.S. administration has been telling UKR unequ with unequivocally demands for a hard stop on striking Russian oil assets. So they have been telling them, stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this. And they just did it again today. They just did this, this major strike. Now, the reason why I think they're doing it, not necessarily, not like they're showing favor towards Russia, but it's about the global economy and how it relates to oil. And, and, you know, taking that out is going to cause more problems and it could potentially, you know, I think the current administration doesn't want to see high gas prices, especially during the selection process that's going to be going on this year. Uh, and we're already seeing high ga higher gas prices. We're already seeing oil barrels rising well over $80, 80 plus dollars a barrel now. I can't remember what the, the high is, but it's climbing. So um, this is interesting for two accounts. One, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, the, the back and forth between UK and Russia. But the second part is that the U.S. has told them not to do it and they're doing it. So now what does that mean uh, for the relationship with our administration, which is so pro UKR, um, that they're just saying, you know what, we're still going to do it. We don't care what you say. We're going to go after their oil. Yeah, it, it's like uh, everything that it was said not to do, it, it's just like, oh, there's a red line. Oh, let's hop, skip, and trip over it. I guess we'll see what happens. Um, by the way, uh, we'll talk about the 30 warplanes. I, I flashed that on the screen for a second on accident, but we'll get to that too. We, and we, you, 
Dex, can you see if there's an update on that? We, we made sure to let you guys know. We don't have that 100% verified because it is from a news that it looks like it's centered in uh, India. Uh, but I, I did show that. So I'll show you that, and I, I promised we would get to that. Uh, Brett Butler says, be safe, stock up where you can. Everyone else is prepping. You better start. Know your neighbors. Be vigilant. Well, a uh, really important part about that, know your neighbors. You can't set up a, a neighborhood protection plan or an NPP after an event happens. Uh, but depending on where you live, you may not want to, to be honest. Uh, I, I have a friend that in his neighborhood, it would actually be more, um, it, it would not be beneficial for for him to set up a NPP. How NPPs work, by the way, and we saw one in play during the the protests and things back when Chaz was set up. There were neighborhoods here where people had set up uh, barricades to their neighbors, uh, to their neighborhood. And we're not talking about, you know, being, you know, I guess it, it, basically they set up and they were protecting their neighborhoods from trouble. Back when people were lighting things on fire, lighting dumpsters on fire, breaking into cars, smashing cars for no reason, uh, you saw NPPs at work. You saw uh, several people armed, protecting neighborhoods. That's how, if it was done properly and it looked like it was, they were protecting every entrance to their neighborhood and they were in coordination with all of their neighbors. Not a, not every neighborhood you can do that, uh, but some it would really work out well. Things like that, but also know the neighbors. Uh, if you hear about it, keep your ear open. Know the neighbors that aren't prepared. This has been said a long time that, you know, the pastor down the street, he could be the one who robs you when all this stuff goes down. Because if people are not prepared, the, the more people that are prepared, the better. Because the people that are not prepared, and we'll talk about this with, um, with some of our friends here that are coming on, the more uh, the people that are prepared, the less people that are crazies, the less zombies are out there. So great comment. I hope, I hope that people at least have a basic kind of understanding of their neighbors. Nowadays, people don't talk to their neighbors. It's very good. If you have a really solid neighborhood, you can actually make friends with and talk about disasters and they're open to hearing it. But now in the current climate, if you're in Washington, uh, tough luck if you're in Seattle, most of those people will think, oh, you are you probably support that president, blah, blah, blah. I'm not doing nothing with you. And then uh, your boy Dozer, what is going on? 415 in Vegas. That would be cheap here. Uh, it's, it's closer to f I, five bucks. L other day it was like, f I think I got it for under five bucks again. Uh, <laughs> Barrick, well, whatever floats your boat. Uh, let's see here. 9.0 subduction will send a 155 foot wave into Seattle. Well, not, a, not exactly into Seattle. Uh, we have the Puget Sound, but it, it will send a 150 foot wave or at least a 125 foot wave into, uh, parts like, um, well, like ocean shores and places like that. They're going to be underwater. It's going to be bad. And they didn't know that until recently, but now... There's more evidence that it will be over 125 feet wave. So if, if the earthquake doesn't get you, the tsunami might. So yeah, might want to buy a boat if you're in ocean shores. All right, and then let's go over uh, harvest rate. If you guys haven't checked this out, again, you can go buy pre-made food. Again, uh, our recommendation is uh, marfuglenews.com slash prep. But if you want to make your own, it is actually a lot cheaper once you've invested in it. It really depends on your family size or it, how much you're actually planning on doing. Because if you want three months to six months to a year of food and you've got a family of five or six, this is going to save you a ton of money. Uh, once you invest in the machine, you can freeze your own food. You can freeze everything. You can. <laughs> there's not much that you can't freeze dry. Once you freeze dry it, it will be good for up to 25 plus years. You can pick your own dietary restrictions. You can freeze custom meal plans. Actually, many people turn this into a hobby because it is actually a fun thing to do. You can do all sorts of awesome stuff and you can save a lot of money by doing it. If you want, you can actually uh, source your food from wherever you want. 
You can go uh, save money on meat and get it from somewhere else or get it from here or get things in bulk and then freeze dry it as far as it's a lot, uh, lot cheaper that way. Uh, but the machines are not cheap. These especially are the highest quality machine on the market, in my opinion. Go over to marfuglenews.com slash freeze. Uh, they're very efficient. They're extremely easy. And with our code, you get $300 off and free shipping. Uh, they it, It's very de- deceiving, this picture, but these are larger machines, and they do a, a wonderful job. There's different sizes, so go over to marfuglenews.com slash freeze to learn more. Uh, and again, go over there to enter to win. You can get a free one, and they've even said if you end up winning one, even if you've bought one, they'll actually refund you the money for the one you bought. Uh, and uh, again, even if you've bought one and you, you still win, they'll refund you money for the one you bought. So go to enter win. There's nothing to lose there. And uh, and mostly, again, too, if you have a, a garden, you can save everything. You don't have to waste all that food. A lot of people waste a lot of stuff from their garden that they can't eat. And then space junk crashes through a man's house and almost hits his son. Or at least that's what they say happened. I'm sure we're going to get probably a lot more stories like this. The more stuff that goes up into the sky and the the more craziness that gets put up there. But a man from Florida may have to sue Japan after rubbish from the ISS crashed through his house. Well, Japan's space agency anyways. It says, well, that's a lot to take in. It says, unsurprisingly, there's limited space for garbage on the ISS, meaning teams on board regularly throw their rubbish out into space where it falls to Earth and burns up in the atmosphere. Now, I can hear people rolling over in their graves, and I can hear the audience going, oh, sure. Yeah, so, by the way, they're saying that this is garbage. I I can see where you're like, "Uh uh-huh, sure. But last month, they dropped a pallet of used batteries, the heaviest trash dump yet. And it seems some of it survived the fiery re-entry over the Gulf of Mexico. Alejandro Otero believes part of the pallet plummeted through the roof of his home in Naples, Florida, narrowly missing his son. I saw comments such as, you know, is this the Truman Show? <laughs> is it one of the lights from the uh, from the stage, right? What the heck? Dex, could you imagine a pallet of batteries falling through your living room, uh, you know, crashing through when you're watching a movie? I mean, no, that wouldn't be insane. I, I you know we've seen instances of things falling from the sky and, and crashing into homes like, you know, blue ice or stuff from airplanes. And um, but yeah, you know, something from space, uh, abs- you know, we've seen the meteors now those those are always interesting and sometimes when you get that you might be worth some money too if they don't show up in suits and take it from <clears> them. but but yeah in this particular case seems like uh he might have a case if he's got some damages there i don't know if there's uh any clauses in the law that say they're exempt from being uh responsible or liable for any of the junk they throw out in space if it comes back down and lands on people's property and creates damage and by the way i would love to hear other angles on this what do you think it is i i would love for the creative uh angles on this too uh sharing security footage on x formerly twitter i love how they still have to do that which captured the sound of the falling debris mr otero said looks like one of those pieces landed in my house in naples tore through the roof and went through two floors and almost hit my son uh Again, pictures of the damage show broken roof tiles where it punched a hole into the house, a hole into the ceiling, broken floorboards, and the debris itself. I mean, could you imagine he, him standing there and looking through a hole th- through his ceiling and then looking through the floor and, you know, going doing one of these? Crazy story. Somebody said crazy story. Yeah, exactly. That is nuts. What do you think it really was? Do you think it was batteries from the ISS or do you think one of the lights fell on the Truman Show? Let me know. And earthquake 7.4 happened in Taiwan. This is a massive quake. Uh, As we showed you earlier, and again, this is why we're not going to talk much about it. We we actually covered this over on our Fugal News. 7.4 hit Taiwan. Do you remember last night's show? 
Uh, again, last night's show at about an hour and seven minutes, I started talking about this. Everybody that was at last night's show know this. What were we talking about? Eric Speckler, I think his name, Eric Heckler, that went on the Sean Ryan show. And I was talking about the treaty they have with other countries that they did way back 40 years ago about not causing earthquakes because it was like a weapon of mass destruction that they couldn't control. So all these countries said, well, yeah, we can cause them, but we can't stop them. So they all agreed. They said, yeah, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do anything that might cause it. Because there's, I guess, scientifically, there's many ways you could probably do it. You could light off a big explosive on a on, on a fault line. You could do this, you do that. Some say that there is a something that they have in Antarctica that could possibly cause these things, right? And I, 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 my personal belief is that they're probably there. I believe there is, but uh, as far as what's official, there is nothing like that, right? Well, the timing of this. Taiwan, all of this stuff happening is crazy. And mind you, there is now news. And by the way, it, this isn't verified. Um, Dex, did you get, did you see if there's any verification of this? Uh, there is no other update but the one we're showing. We will cover it as fake news for now. This came out of Times Now, which is an Indian publication. Over 30 Chinese warplanes, nine naval vessels. When we first saw that headline, we thought, hmm, this sounds a lot like the like a week old news. The only reason we saw this is someone sent it to us from Roz Alerts on Twitter. But Roz Alerts, uh, he does, I don't know if it's a he, they post. Um, and sometimes they jump the gun on things and they always properly delete something if it's not right. Um, I, as far as I know, they're still up. But this says, based on several media reports cited in Taiwanese Defense Ministry to say that over 30 Chinese warplanes and nine Navy vessels have been detected around Taiwan. Uh, it says the reports come about an hour after the island nation was hit by a 7.7, .7, now I think 7.4, earthquake on Wednesday. So this is dated today. That's, that's a very close number to what was covered last week. So we don't know if they're still there. Uh, last week it was five vessels and eight. Uh, it was uh, five vessels and eight warplanes. Now it's thirty warplanes and and uh, nine navy vessels. So, but that's not unusual. That on a regular day we would have covered this and said, "Oh, they're crossing over the median line again. They're doing it." So we will cover this as if it's not true. But um, if there's no more verification than this website, uh, Dex, go ahead. Now, what is uh, allegedly true is I mean, allegedly what is true is coming from the JPO saying that the China Taiwan Affairs Office said it was highly concerned with uh, the earthquake um, that hit the island and is willing to provide disaster relief assistance, according to Chinese state media on Wednesday. So that did come out also. Well, well, maybe they'll they'll help. Right. If you want to watch this video over on the set, the 7.4 earthquake, make sure to click here on the replay. Uh, again, you won't see it live, but if you're watching right now the replay, click here with your morning coffee and go watch that short. We covered the earthquake in detail. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Brett Butler. Uh, thank you, Schaefer Girl. Thank you, Swetna Ministries. And uh, thank you over on DLive. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, PMP, thank you for the the diamonds. It's great discussion. Scooby Doo Doo, right? I will find you. It's actually in one of my songs, right? Uh, Vault Music, the Fugle Fam lives here. Much love to all. Ever Dazed, Beer Juice, Kimbria, Carrie Ray, Kiki Gray, uh, Carrie Ray and Kiki Gray, SM879, and everybody else. Thank you so much. Chance and everyone else in the show, Ecto. Thank you, guys. Thank you for continuing to keep the D-Live family alive. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Dex. Much love. Great job, brother. It is now time for the shout -tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout -tro.